2012 wasn't all cheerful for all of us. At the end of the year, we had a difficult time. We had a divisive period. And that's unfortunate. And I wish it wouldn't have happened. That's Governor Rick Snyder yesterday's State of the State address, which was, uh, for, in terms of optics, I guess, a little bit different than normal because he's a little bit different kind of a guy. He uh, is a leader who looks at things from outside the box from near as we can tell, and he's on the other end of our line right now, Governor Rick Snyder. Welcome back to the program. Good morning, Michael Patrick. Well, how did the third State of the State speech compare to the other two? Did you, did you enjoy it a little more? Did it, was it more difficult? What did you think? No, I thought it went fine. Um, because it was a great opportunity to share, you know, all the, the good things that went on last year. Um, we've got an exciting year coming up, and uh, we've made tremendous progress in our state. We we can't shouldn't be complacent nor content with where we're at, but we're, we're the comeback state in the United States right now, and we just need to continue a positive path of moving forward. Let me ask you, I talked to uh, Senator Richardville about a half an hour ago, and during that discussion he said, we're not quite the comeback state yet, but we're on the right track. The train is going down the right tracks. Do you, do you disagree with him? Well, I think it's just the, the semantics of how yeah. you say it. But if you look at it, all the results show very positive numbers in terms of job creation, the economic growth, um, incomes are rising, homes are being sold. Um, the thing is, is I think we both agree that we want to keep going. Um, that we shouldn't be complacent with where we're at. And I've always been clear about that. I think Randy would agree with that. We just want to keep working hard to make it even better. And Lieutenant Governor Kelly was with us yesterday at the uh, Tropo party at AT&T had before your speech, and he said the, the most interesting stat to him is that population went up in your state, in our state, last year. Yeah, and that's why I specifically mentioned that. It didn't go up by much, but if you looked at it, we're the only state in the nation that lost population in the last decade. So when the 2010 census came out, that was a very telling statement. Um, now we're moving back in a positive direction. And the other piece of that, the subset of that I really want to work on is keeping more and more young people in Michigan because we've got good job opportunities. Uh, I guess the line of the night uh, that got the biggest uh, round of applause from those in the chambers there is when you said we can argue about it or we can just use some common sense and get it done. Everybody likes that, and I'm sure every voter likes that, and every constituent likes that. Having said that, there will be arguing. I mean, <laughs> you know that. Well, that's just part of the democratic process. But the main point is, is we stay focused on our common goal, which is making our state better for our customers, the citizens of the state. They hired us, and they don't really care about our arguing. They want results. So let's just give good results to people and get the job done. Uh, Rich Studley was with us a little earlier from the Michigan Chamber of Commerce, and he was just delighted. He says it's a great day for Michigan after hearing your speech. And, uh, and you know, there was some uh, a lot made yesterday on this program and others about how the initiatives that you typically roll out in the state of the state addresses happen. In other words, your batting average, if you want to call it that, is something like 850. <laughs> and that's pretty good. And, and I asked uh, Rich Studley with what the governor proposed yesterday, recognizing that there's a likely reelect. Was he swinging for home runs, singles, and uh, Rich Dudley said doubles and triples. True? Well, I appreciate that, but the, the, I don't even think about it in terms of reelection. I'm just showing up every day saying, how do I do the best job? It's an honor being governor, and I want to make the state great. So I just come into work saying, okay, let's, what do we have next on the list? What are our big problems? What haven't we solved for years? Let's put them on the table. Let's resolve them with common sense. That's all part of relentless positive action, Michael Patrick, and I'm just staying focused on that. In terms of the uh, the insider stuff, if you will, there have been uh, some of the Democrats, Senator Whitmer, for instance, complaining that uh, she can't communicate with you on a regular basis. Uh, I know that you made great efforts to reach out to the Democrat caucus uh, at the start of the session this year. Uh, do you think that the, there's a different way to go about it that can feel more inclusive? I mean, this, this Tim Grimal guy seems to be very outspoken. Well, I'm trying. So actually, I gave a briefing to both of them. Um, yesterday, before I gave the State of the State, and a number of their staff and other people from the Democratic side of the aisle um, sat down with them, walked them through what I was going to talk about, said, here's an opportunity. Let me know any of these things you'd like to work on together. I'm open to doing that. I'd be happy to meet with them next week if they've identified things and say, which ones would you like to work on together? So um, just being really open about it, because the way I view it is, is again, it, it's about getting results. And to the degree people want to join good programs that make Michigan better, why shouldn't we all work together on those things? And roads are a great illustration. Here you've got something that this is an opportunity to save us money in the long term, um, save us repair costs, create jobs, and save lives. So let's get this road project moving ahead, and let's get going. Do you, uh, you know, you're basically asking us to pay uh, 
all of us in the state of Michigan to pay a little bit more to fix the roads. And as you say, it would create jobs and uh, maybe save lives, too, from the accidents and uh, the, the repairs that we'd have to do to our cars anyway. If it's to be uh, a, an increase in the car registration every year, what percentage would you be comfortable with? Well, it would be a combination, Michael Patrick, of both increasing the gas tax and the registration fee. And it amounts to about, if you put both pieces together, it would be about $10 a month on average for a vehicle. So if you have a lower-value vehicle or you drive less, it would be, could be much less than that, but about $10 a month. And it would actually save us money because it's that old thing. It's about the concept is the same thing as saying, do you go get an oil change or do you wait for an engine rebuild? By getting an oil change, it costs you some money, the $10 a month kind of concept. But if we don't do that, if we projected out 10 years, the bill would be more than two and a half, two to two and a half times um, what we'd be paying on a monthly basis in total. So if you look at it, it saves us money. It would actually save us on repair costs. We pay about $80 a year higher repair costs for our vehicles than the surrounding states. It would be over 12,000 jobs being created, which helped the whole economy. And it would be about 100 lives. And you can't put a price on those. Yeah. So you stack all those things up. This is a common sense thing to do. Well, if it's graduated, there's going to be a big run on used Yugos, right? <laughs> well, that's a, the good part. Because, again, it's based on value and road usage. You know, are you out on the roads driving around? So the, the good part is, is this gets back to saying it's a user fee. And if you're using the roads, shouldn't you pay your fair share? And by having better roads, you're going to be better off. It's going to save you money. It's going to, you know, save you on repair costs. And, again, that part about saving lives, because that's why I asked people last night, almost all of us know someone that's been – you know, lost their life or seriously injured in a car accident. And 100 lives are a lot of lives. Mm. Well, I can't wait to see the pure Michigan. We've got the best roads in the nation spot that'll eventually come out. How's that sound? That would be exciting. <laughs> you got a good sense of humor, and I appreciate it very much. And uh, thank you for the time. I know you're hot footing it around the state today and uh, selling it all over Michigan. And we appreciate you stopping here with us, too. Uh, great talking with you, Michael Patrick. Have a great day. Governor Rick Snyder says, let's go. That's what he's always been saying the minute he got the nomination. Let's go. And he's still saying it today. It's Michael Patrick Shields all across Michigan.